It was an unbelievable weekend. A tragic, tragic weekend. And yet the most glorious in hindsight. Jesus went to the cross. He was dying for all of humanity. Not just like, like the Jews had, were used to, to just bring a lamb that would be enough for the year or for that part of sin. Jesus had come to carry our diseases, to carry our sicknesses, to go on the cross, to take all of our sins on his body. What an amazing, what an amazing story. This is true. This is actual fact. Jesus came to save us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, Jesus loves you. He loves me. God cares for his humanity. He cares for every single person. He wants that everyone comes to the saving knowledge and gives his life to Christ and receives eternal life. Isn't that powerful? You know, we are in a fallen world, but God loves each one of us. And then God made a way of rescue. And in making that way of rescue, he now gives each of us a choice and we can decide if we want to receive him or not. He doesn't force us, but he brings us the facts and he says, you can receive salvation. You can have eternal life and it is your choice. And then he starts to renew us and he starts to take to build up our lives again where we had lost it. That's what that's the message of this book, the Bible. The message here is how God rebuilds a broken life and a broken world. And he does it by coming himself, becoming incarnate and becoming a, a human being and carrying the sins of the world on his body. That's what happened. Jesus was beaten terribly. They whipped him until his back looked like a freshly plowed field. They took him out. They made him carry the heavy cross. And because of loss of blood, and Jesus was a very healthy man, he had never had disease. He had never been sick in his life. He was the specimen of health because he was the son of God. And as he was carrying the cross and the blood was, was following, there was a trail of blood behind him. And uh, he got weaker and weaker and he collapsed. And then one of the soldiers summoned Simon of Cyrene and said, come on, carry this cross. And then Simon picked it up and the beauty was Simon came from Africa. Cyrene is in Africa and he carries the cross up the hill with Jesus at his side, up to Golgotha. They laid it down and then Jesus was thrown onto the cross and his arms stretched out and they put huge spikes into his hands and they beat the spikes with hammers into his hands and into his legs and there he into his feet and there he was then they raised the cross and dropped it into the socket in the ground into the hole in the ground and they made it stand and as jesus overlooked he saw the people all of jerusalem had come People from all over Palestine had come because it was the Passover weekend. People had come to Jerusalem to celebrate at the temple and they all were there. And as Jesus was dying, it was a public thing. Everybody saw him die and there he was. And when he overlooked at the crowd and the pain, the excruciating pain, Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus' last words were, it is finished. What is finished? His work was complete of setting us free from the bondage of sin and Satan. Jesus made a way for us to receive salvation. And because of Christ, 
we can be sanctified. We can, we're not perfect. None of us is perfect. We are growing into perfection as we grow closer to Jesus. But the beauty is what he did on the cross, he sanctified us. In God's eyes, we are clean. We are sanctified if we give our lives to him. Now, what does that mean for me? For me, it means life. This old life of sin is gone. I can come and approach in the name of Jesus. I can approach God and I can say, Abba, Father, to him because he is my Lord. He is my Father. I thank God for this. But you know, there were also some very important test uh, 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 witnesses that had seen Jesus die, but also saw him rise. And not only rise, but Jesus, they saw the resurrecting Christ af after over 40 days after Jesus had resurrected from the dead. Jesus had come back and forth. We see Mary Magdalene coming to the tomb now. Jesus had been taken down. His body had been taken down. He had died. One of the, sp uh, the soldiers had put a spear into his side. And just to prove that he was dead, they took down the body afterwards. And certainly he was dead. They took him into a, into a tomb. They laid him in there. They put a huge stone there. But Mary Magdalene, she could not sleep. And early in the morning she made her way there were two uh, uh, she made her way to the tomb and as she got there she saw that the tomb was open and who was there nobody then she was weeping weeping and it seemed like there was a gardener she thought it was a gardener and and then uh, Jesus mentions her name and says Mary she says, oh, if you have taken him, tell me where you have put him. Where have you put him? And he says, Mary. And the moment Jesus mentions her name, she recognizes this, the voice of the master. And she turns around and there is, she sees the master. And Jesus says, go to Jerusalem and tell them. So she was the first witness, the first to tell everybody about the resurrected Christ. Jesus let Mary know because she was so hungering to want to see the Savior, to want to be at the grave near where Jesus had, uh, had been laid. You know, if you seek God, you can find him. He is out to let himself be known to you if you would only seek him. You may not have been religious in the past. You may not have even want to have anything to do with it. But I want to encourage you that seek God truly with all of your heart, and you will find him. Another witness that we see here are the ten disciples. They were up in the upper room. Jesus suddenly came, came because he is now not limited to, uh, to walls or anything, and he stood in front of them, and he says, Peace be with you, and all the disciples saw him. And he spoke to them, and he ate fish with them. The next thing was uh, that he showed himself to Thomas because Thomas was not a part of uh, with the disciples the first time Jesus was there. And then he walks up to Thomas because Thomas had said, I will only believe if I put my finger into the male, nail prints. If I've put my, my hand in, into his side where that spear went through, then I will believe. Otherwise, I will not believe. And, you know, it's not wrong to be critical. It's not wrong to want to see the facts. But if you study the Word of God, you will always find the facts. And this is beautiful. The facts show that Jesus rose from the dead. And Thomas was able to see that. Then many women saw him. We read that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Many saw him. We see that also two disciples on their way to Emmaus having a hot discussion about the things that happened uh, over that weekend. And suddenly Jesus approaches them, is talking to them, explains from the scriptures why the Messiah had to do, go and undergo these things. And suddenly after, as Jesus was breaking the bread, he was gone. He vanished. And they knew this was the Lord. The Lord was there. 
And so uh, the disciples, they, they, many of, of them even went fishing. They fished all night. Jesus had made a breakfast for them. And uh, then he said, throw your nets on the other side. They thought, who is this telling us to throw nets on the other side? Uh, we're, we're the fishermen. I mean, we have fishermen here that are, are professionals and they know how to fish. And then as they catch the large sum of fish, Peter jumps in the water and says, this is the Lord. And he goes right, swimming over to the shore. And sure enough, there's Jesus. And Jesus forgives him. You know, Peter had denied him three times and said, I don't even know the man. I don't know the man. And then Jesus takes him aside and says, I promote you to be a shepherd. Take care of my sheep. Take care of my lambs. And Peter became a key leader of the church, of the early church uh, following that, that time. Then we saw how many saw him go into heaven. They, there was a whole crowd, and the two, two men dressed in white, they said to, to the crowd, Why are you all looking up to heaven? The same way you have seen him go is the same way he will come back. And Jesus is alive today, and he will come back to take his church at some point. And we need all to be ready. I believe I can almost hear his footsteps already, that he's coming to come to take his church to be with him. Now, there were over 500 people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, over 500 people saw him at one time. You know, 500 people cannot have hallucinations at the same time. And, uh, and it's true. Sometimes when people pass away, we, uh, you know, if one person or two might have a, hum a hallucination, but 500 people to hallucinate and have said they saw the Savior is an impossibility. Jesus rose and he cares for you. And even today, right now, in this situation, as we live here in a world that is globally affected with, with this disease, as the virus of, of the COVID-19 is sweeping through the continents and so many people are dying, older people especially, and those with already with sicknesses that, and the people that are not strong in their immunity and people are dying and it looks really dire. I tell you, this is the best news you can get because Jesus is stronger than any disease. And if you come to, his, in, in, to him in the name of Jesus, there is hope. And even if we were to die, there is hope because this life is not everything. We need eternal life. And it is important that we're ready for the future. We, we prepare ourselves in so many ways. We insure our cars. We insure our lives. We take care of this. We make sure our children have enough when, when our life is over. And we do so many preparations for the time when we will no longer be here. Usually, that's the case. But when it comes to the gospel, to eternal life, where it talks about a life after death, many people are not prepared. And that's why... That's why I'm so excited that even in a time when we know there's all kinds of hardship and tribulation and so much fear all over, in Jesus you can have your, your foundation and you can know that He is the Christ. He is the one that will lead you even through the dark valley. The, uh, the book of Psalms in, in, in verse 23 says, even if I, if I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil. And you see, that's what God wants to do. He wants to take away the fear out of our lives. Jesus said in the last verse in, in John chapter 16, he says, fear not. He says, fear not, for I have overcome the world. People were scattered in their homes. People were scattered away. They were afraid of what was, what was happening. And Jesus said, fear not. And that's even the same case today. I have overcome the world. Let's pray. If you want to receive Jesus right now, this is your opportunity. Just pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner. I recognize that. And I need to turn. And I forsake my old life. And I receive you as my personal Savior right now. Be my Lord. Forgive my sin. 
And Lord, change me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and may you have a wonderful Easter time, and may the Lord use you wherever you are, and grow in Christ. He's worth it. Bye-bye.